Okay, so you just learned the basic shape of an exponential function. Okay, you know, we did, uh, we graphed 2 to the x, 3 to the x, 4 to the x, we even graphed e to the x, okay? Uh, but that's going from the function to the graph. What I want to show you how to do now is, I uh, just briefly want to uh, um, do a few examples of how to look at an exponential graph and be able to determine uh, what its function is, okay? All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to project a, a function up or a graph up onto the screen right now. All right, so we've got this coordinate plane, and you can see this uh, sort of uh, green colored uh, exponential graph here. See, it's, it's flat over here, and then it goes steep right there, right? Okay. Um, and so uh, I want to show you, like, basically two or three main features or a technique that you can use to identify the equation of the graph. Now the reason I'm doing this is because uh, I'm, I'm, we're actually, I'm moving you to a place where you can identify the equation of a more complicated exponential function. One that's not just simply 2 to the x. We're going to complicate it to the point where it becomes, let's say, negative 2 to the power of negative x plus 5 and then minus 7, okay? So it's going to become, we're working, we're starting with the basic shape of an exponential graph, but we're working ourselves, ourselves to a place where we can identify the graph of a more complicated function. Very similar to what we did with the graphs of quadratic functions, very similar to what we did with the graphs of polynomial functions, okay? All right, so, um, but all we're working with right now is, is basic exponential functions. The first thing that you have to learn how to do is, as long as the graph is on a coordinate plane, if it's not on a coordinate plane, you have no hope, really. Well, not much hope. Uh, so the very first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to look for the flat part of the graph. You can see that it goes flat right here, right? Here's where it goes up, up, and away, very steep. But here's where it goes flat. And the very first thing you're going to do is you are going to draw in a dashed line on the on the axis or on the horizontal line where the graph goes flat. Now, presumably in this case, and in this case it is, this is the x-axis, right? So it's on the x-axis, which is good. That's where y equals zero, right? We said that the asymptote is approaching a value of zero, right? Then we have um, the y-axis right here, okay? And what you're doing is you're looking for the place where the graph is precisely one unit above the asymptote, okay? So if this is the asymptote right here, got a little crazy here with it. This is the asymptote right here. What we're going to do is we're going to go one unit up from there, one unit up, and we're going to look, we're going to go along that line and find where the curve is, where the curve intersects one unit up, which is right here. That's where the graph is one unit above the asymptote. Now you can see that that is on the y-axis. And we want to know what are the coordinates of that point. Well, since this is the origin and we've gone up one, we know that this is the point zero, one. Okay, actually, let me put this over on, the, over on that side because we want to do some work in here. So this is the point zero, one. And I told you that all exponential functions they go flat to the left, right? They all go through the point zero, 1. So this is starting to look like an exponential function, right? Okay, it's meeting all the criteria of an exponential function. Well, we only need one more thing. What we're going to do is we're going to go one unit over from here. We're going to go one unit over from this point zero, 1, and that's where x is equal to 1, right? Where x equals 1. And what we want to know is, from the asymptote, the asymptote is on the x-axis, how far up do we have to go to hit the curve? So from here, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, right there, right? So we know that this graph goes through the point, if we have an x, we have a y, we know that it goes through the point 0, 1, which is normal for an exponential function, and it goes through the point 1, 4, okay? So it has a height of 4 where x is equal to 1. Well, that means that something, let's say, let's call it k for now, to the x power, or excuse me, in this case, to the first power, 
something to the first power must be equal to 4. Well, in that case, k must be equal to 4, because the only thing that's going to equal 4 to the first power is 4. And therefore, th the base of this exponential function, k must be equal to 4. Therefore, this is the graph of f of x is equal to 4 to the x power. Okay, Because we know it's exponential, it goes flat, it goes through 0, 1, and then it goes steep. And if we went over one unit, we would go up 1, 2, 3, 4, so it's 4 to the x. Now, if we went over up one unit and it went up 7, then it would be 7 to the x power. Okay, Let's try another one. All right, here's another one. Why don't you pause the video and see if you can figure out what the equation of this exponential function is. All right. Well, we know it's exponential because we can see that it goes flat right here along the x-axis, right? Okay, so we've got our horizontal asymptote right along the x-axis. It goes flat. We can see that it goes through the point 0, 1. And so now all we have to do is go one unit over from here to where x is equal to 1 and count up to the curve. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, not quite, 7, there it is, 8, because on 9 it's on the other side, on 7 it's on this side, on 9 it's on this side, therefore this must be 7, or it must be 8, and so therefore this is f of x is equal to 8 to the x power, okay? That is the equation of this exponential function, okay? Let's just do about maybe two more of them. All right, here's another one. See if you can figure it out. Why don't you pause it and see if you can figure out which, uh, which exponential function this is. All right, so we've got our horizontal asymptote right here. It goes flat right here at the x-axis. So once again, we have a, I'm going to draw it from the side, see if I can make it look better. We've got a horizontal asymptote right here, approaching zero. And now we can also see that the graph passes through the point zero, one. Okay, so flat here, goes steep over here, passes through the point zero, one. And now we just have to go over one unit from that point to where x is equal to 1. Here x is e equal to 0. Here x is equal to 1. We're going to go up 1, 2, 3. Okay, well, it's not 2 and it's not 3. It's somewhere in between. Well, that's weird. must be a decimal value. Okay, so here's the deal. Anytime it's between 2 and 3 but closer to 3, it's going to be E. Remember that E is approximately equal to 2.7182812, right? So around 2.718, so when it's closer to 3, 2.718 is between 2 and 3, but it's closer to 3. So this is definitely E. You know, there's no really no way of knowing for sure what a decimal is on a, on a graph. But if it's between 2 and 3, but a little closer to 3, it's E, okay? And so therefore, this is the graph of f of x is equal to E to the x power, okay? Let's do just one more. All right, last one we're going to do here. Pause the video, see if you can figure this one out. All right, this time I'm not even going to draw in the asymptote. Just know that the asymptote is right here, okay? We know that one unit up from the asymptote is this point right here. There's on the y-axis. This is the point 0, 1, right? If we go one unit over to where x is equal to 1, and then we go up 1, 2, 3, 4. Looks like 5 to me because 4, it's on the left. 6, it's on the right. It looks like it passes through at 5 right there, and therefore this must be f of x is equal to 5 to the x power, okay? All right, excellent. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move into better understanding. We're going to, we're going to uh, do reflections of this graph. We're, we're going to reflect it over to the right. We're going to reflect it down below the, the x-axis, and we're really going to change it up.